A few years back, I had a minor surgery. I was totally prepared for sharp instruments, but then the doctor gleefully showed me his new plasma scalpel. I've since noticed that plasma everything has become really trendy, including a plasma-powered nappy bin. What's up with all this plasma stuff? What even is plasma? Let's have a look. Plasma is often called the fourth state of matter in addition to solid, liquid and gas. It's different from the other three in that in plasma, electrons are no longer bound to atomic nuclei. They're free-range electrons, basically. So a plasma always has two components, a positively charged one and a negatively charged one, and those can behave independently. In general, they even have two different temperatures as if one temperature wasn't complicated enough. You have probably heard of plasma as what makes up the sun or what you have inside a nuclear fusion reactor. In these cases, the plasma is created through the heat and pressure that rips the electrons off the nuclei. But there are easier ways to create plasmas. For example, by pushing high voltage through gases. That'll also rip electrons off air molecules and, yes, create small amounts of plasma. Another fast and easy way to create a charged situation is asking a particle physicist why they still haven't found supersymmetry. What makes plasmas attractive from an engineering perspective is that charged particles can quite easily be accelerated and directed. This is why you can use plasmas to propel spacecraft. We just talked a few weeks ago about a small plasma thruster to maneuver spacecraft. It produces a thrust in the range of 40 or so millinewton. But the American company Howe Industries now wants to build a giant plasma thruster that can generate generate up to 100,000 Newton. That's still not enough to get a rocket off the planet, but it'd be a lot of thrust once you're in space. Indeed, they say this could get you to Mars in as little as three months with small amounts of fuel and high efficiency. Personally, I think that's still more time than I'd like to spend locked up in a can floating through a vacuum. But then again, at the moment, getting to Mars takes about nine months, so it'd be an improvement indeed. How do they they want to generate that much thrust with good old nuclear power, nuclear fission power to be more specific, a controlled chain reaction in uranium that evaporates a fuel pellet and heats it up dramatically very quickly. This could generate a lot of thrust because it'd produce a lot of plasma, so you'd have a lot of stuff that you can throw out of the spacecraft. You need the nuclear fission reaction to produce enough power to make that happen. NASA recently announced they'll be supporting the project. But this isn't the only thing you can do with plasma. Plasma applications can loosely be distinguished in three types, those that use hot, warm and cold plasma. Hot plasma is the nuclear fusion sort of stuff and what the rocket thrusters work with. The plasma scalpel uses warm plasma plasma that's usually a few hundred to a few thousand degrees Celsius or so. The big benefit of plasma scalpels is that they don't just cut, they pretty much immediately fuse blood vessels, which significantly reduces blood loss. At least that's what the doctor told me. Has anyone else noticed that doctors really like showing off their new tech? Hey, look at this amazing new tooth extractor. Okay, but I digress. The reason that plasma has become much more widely used in the past decade or so is because of technological advances that have made it possible to create cold plasmas quite easily in everyday circumstances. Cold plasmas have room temperature, that's the heavy particle temperature, so they don't burn stuff. However, because the components are so highly charged, cold plasmas still have rather dramatic effects on other materials. One of the obvious applications of cold plasma beams is precise etching of surfaces or depositing certain molecules on the surfaces. This is very useful in many industries. But the application that cold plasmas have become most widely used for is killing germs. They're being used to sterilize medical instruments or also surfaces because that way you don't need to use chemicals. 
Cold plasmas can also be used to purify water or decontaminate air and to make food more durable. And this is also why there's this plasma nappy bin. The idea is that you put in your stinky trash, push the plasma button and that'll kill off any bacteria that create the stink. At least that's the idea. I haven't tried the thing, though I now want to launch a startup for plasma enhanced washing machines. The widespread application of code plasma Mass is a recent development owing to technological advances in electrode quality and a better understanding of what these plasmas can do. I think this is a pretty interesting development and I'm curious what uses for plasmas engineers will come up with next. I hope lightsabers are among them. As to that plasma scalpel, the smell was terrible. Definitely do not recommend. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.